Hi, this is Ken from Rocket Family KML. Uh, finishing up the final tests on my Mad Cow Torrent Level 1 cert. Uh, this is just continuing documentation of what I've done. Uh, I'm going to be testing my dual deployment charges to make sure I have adequate black powder to deploy the parachutes. Uh, so we went out and we purchased some 4F or FFFFG black powder. I like black powder over the power decks. Uh, power decks, you have to really compress it tightly for it to function the way it's supposed to, to burn right. Black powder is a little bit less sensitive about that and more forgiving. So if I don't quite get it perfect, I'm not going to lose my rocket to uh, something as simple as that. And again, that's my personal preference. Things I've done in preparation for this is I have removed the eBay sled. Uh, that is so I don't potentially damage my eBay sled. Uh, why do I want to damage my electronics when I don't need to? And in preparation, I've set up some wires. And what I do, these wires will be hooked up to the igniters. I've twisted the ends together. This is the end that I'm going to be connecting to the uh, micro clips for the igniter test. And then I'm going to shield it so I don't damage that with uh, the piece of wire that I stripped, uh, flex uh, outer shield that I've stripped off. Now to protect it, and that's how you find your igniters. On your high powers come like this, your mid and high power engines. That's so that you can't accidentally static charge and set off the igniter. Uh, what I've done is I've already hooked up my aft one. It's already set in there and taped in place. This wire is going to run through the rocket body down and out the engine uh, where the engine goes in. And that way I'm not damaging the outside of the rocket with wires hanging out through the side. Then through the air port, it's also the port that I use to turn on and off the eBay sled. I ran those wires up, came through, and this will hook to my igniter in the top cup. And again, I'll put the igniter in the cup with the satchel charge that I'm making. And then connect the wires up, tape it all up, and we're ready to take it outside and test it. So we're going to go ahead and start weighing out our uh, black powder and doing our calculations for everything. And we'll get it set and get going. All right, so I've used a tool online called the uh, Deployment Charge uh, Calculator. You can get it through uh, uh, different programs online. Just Google Deployment Charge Calculator, uh, Dual Deployment Charge Calculator, or uh, talk to some of your local guys, and they'll be able to help you out with that. Uh, I get mine at uh, info-online.org. And uh, it's a great rocketry form. So we're going to measure out our uh, powder after we calculated it. For the upper tube, we calculated that we have, uh, taking out the fact that you have a nose cone that extends back to approximately here. And then we have the eBay coming up to approximately here. We need to take out that. So we actually only have a six inch section of body tube that we're trying to create gas and compression in. Uh, I've seen a lot of videos online where people have done these tests and they're really energetic and they shoot that nose cone way off over the horizon. Uh, that's a little exaggeration, but they really shoot the nose cone far off and there's no need to, to blast it off that way. You're just trying to get it off uh, and do the job. And remember, you're gonna be in a less atmosphere so it's gonna come off a little bit easier, which is why we use shear pins in the nose cone anyways. So I've calculated for six inches with 4F, that's FFFFG black powder. Uh, we're going to need for the bottom tube approximately 0.58 grams. So I've got my scale. We've turned it on. We let it. You let your scale sit for a little bit to to you know stabilize itself. If you've gone from warm to cold or vice versa, let it come to temperature. Make sure it's clean. I'm going to use a little piece of paper here. And then we're going to zero that out. And now we're going to get, uh, I only go one decimal below the point, so I'm going to uh, kind of have to just guess at what 5.8 is. Uh, so we'll take and we'll just lightly sprinkle the powder on there. That's 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 3, 4, there's 5. There's six, so we'll take just a little teensy bit back off. Okay, so now I want to make a little satchel for this. So we'll take our powder off, cap up our canister, 
Please remember, handle black powder safely. Now I'm going to take some uh, saran wrap and I'm going to make a little satchel out of it. So I'm going to cut off a piece here. And I'm going to pour the black powder right into the center of that. They have all sorts of little containers you can use, uh, whatever you're comfortable with. If you have the budget to be able to go out and buy things, uh, by all means, go out there and buy the uh, different things that you can use to uh, uh, make these. Okay, again, I'm only using Estes solar igniters. I don't see the need to go crazy and use electric matches for a test like this. I really don't have uh, the... Uh, money to throw away on electric matches. So we're going to go ahead and do it this way. So now I'm going to take this charge that I've made this little bindle out of. And I'm going to kind of pick it up here. And I want to keep it all central. And I'm going to get my igniter in there. And I'm going to just kind of bundle it up to my igniter. And the idea is that I've got everything compressed into this nice little bundle, and I'm trying not to twist my igniter wires. Okay, so now I can take this, and I'm going to push the saran wrap down so I expose my wires more, and I'm going to attach. Or wrap it with some masking tape. One thing I will remind you about is if you wrap the masking tape tight, you're increasing the uh, explosive potential of your... And the reason I'm taping up here between the wires is so I don't have any stray powders come out. And th this isn't a, a tight tape. This is just enough to hold the bindle together. If you tape it too tightly, it's like fireworks. It'll go kaboom, and we don't want kaboom. We just want it to burn rapidly and toss out our... Uh, igniters, our, our parachutes. Okay, so again, for safety purposes, I've taken and wrapped the trailing ends of my wires that will be connected to the electrical system, and I've shielded them, so now they're protected from ele uh, stray electrical sparks, and if something were to statically build up, it can't discharge. It's a complete loop, so it cannot discharge and spark. It's ran through to the Ford Bay, so now I'm going to strip these wires, And something about wire cutters, remember there's two types of wire. There's solid, which is what I'm using now, and there's stranded wire. <coughs> An example of stranded wire, right here where you have the, the fray strands, all sorts of little strands. So be sure you have the right type of wire cutters for what you're doing. You don't want to damage. If you cut into the uh, solid with your wire cutters, you've made a weak point that can snap. We don't want that to happen. So now I'm going to twist these two together. Excuse me. <clears throat> and I'm going to twist these two together. And right before I went to connect this, I looked over and made sure that I had that um, end right here. And I know that there's nothing connected to it. Always, always double, triple check. Look to make sure you're not going to accidentally hurt yourself. More people, and I am wearing glasses right now, so I'm protected from uh, possible eye damage if something were to go wrong. The little extra step I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the paper right now, so now I can actually bend this wire over this way and tape it. In place, just like this. So go around that twice, and again, I'm trying to protect wires from uh, crossing and short circuiting. And then we'll look, no short circuit wrap there. We'll go around this one. I'm going to add a little bit more there on the top. I'm just trying to make sure that I have good contact with my wires, but not a short between the wires. I don't want that to happen. 
I'm also trying not to compress this too much. Now I can take it and I'm going to wrap around this eye bolt here to help stabilize it. I'm going to stuff it in my cup and I'm going to tape it in place in my cup. So now this is something you'd be doing at the range. I would suggest having a sign stating that you are working with black powder up and that you ask that nobody approach with open flame or cigarettes. And then we'll go around this way. So that's taped across there. Now I'm sorry about these camera angles, but my camera's not positioned where I can really show you everything too well. Now we're taped that way. I'm gonna go over the top one more time. Just to make sure it can't pull loose. Okay. Now you want to configure your rocket almost identical to how you plan on launching it. So if you're going to have tape wrapped around your, your uh, aft end, make sure that tape is wrapped around. It's the snug fit that you want. So now I'm going to go over to my rocket. I'm going to slide this through here to keep it out of my way. And I'm going to insert this end into the uh, motor tube and run it out the bottom of the rocket and then slide everything in, line it up, and then I'll have it all set and ready. I can tape this to the side of the nose section. I can launch the nose first. I can launch the nose second. doesn't matter which way I do it. But now I can test both front and back independently and make sure that my forward charge and my aft charge are going to work. So uh, let's get that set up and we'll slide these together and I'll show you the final configuration and we'll go out and we'll test. All right, we've got the uh, torn in final configuration now. Uh, sorry for the bounciness, but I'm hand holding a camera. So here's our upper charge. Uh, we've got our shear screws in place. And then we have our rivets holding the uh, eBay in place. I've taped the wire to the rocket. Again, I've got my end strung together. The wires are twisted together so they cannot cause a static spark. And it goes in through the port and runs up to the upper end of the eBay with the charge attached. Then we come down to the bottom. I ran the charge through the bottom, or the wire through the bottom, through the engine, up to the um, eBay and connected it up like you normally would have it connected. Again, the same thing with the wire here. It's been twisted together, and I put that over just to prevent the wires from being touched by anything. And I taped that to the rocket. So we'll test it off. The reason for taping is that way I've got uh, a little bit of slack there, and I, if I snag it, I'm not going to damage it. It's going to rip the tape first and not yank on the rocket. So we'll test the nose first, probably, and see how well that flies off. And then we'll put it back on, uh, and then we'll test the lower portion and see how that works. So take it outside, and we'll start our testing. And yeah, my bench gets a little messy, but compared to what most people say, my bench is pretty clean. <laughs> All right, we're getting ready to do a test. We have a continuity and armed. Five, four, three, two, one. And we have a successful test. Testing aft deployment or drogue chute deployment charge, one gram. We are hot. Three, two, one. We have a success. So I'd say we had a couple of successful tests there. We had a good deployment of the uh, upper section, the nose cone. Uh, shoot came out and went full distance, which is nice. I uh, could have put a little more energy in the bottom one, but uh, that's easily adjustable. So um, the recommended charge is, is 1.27 for the bottom. I did uh, 1.0 grams, so I'm going to go ahead and up it to 1.2, and uh, we should see sufficient deployment at that point in time. So uh, now we're going to reassemble the rocket, put the eBay back in, and get everything else set up and ready for flight, and level one uh, certification flight here coming real soon. Thanks for watching.